Welcome to the Invasive Species Action Network's fly tying series on invasive pests. Invasive species are a problem globally, both affecting our economies and ecosystems. If you would like to learn more about invasive pests, stick with us at the end of the video. Hi, I'm Rick Wallum, and tonight I'm going to be tying uh, the spongy moth. And this is my variation of the spongy moth. Here's what the final product looks like. Um, tied with various synthetic materials. So some of the materials that we're going to use in this pattern are some two millimeter foam in tan, some magic dub, uh, which is sort of pre-strung um, onto a piece of line for the legs. And then some tan CDC um, for the head. And another important piece is a strip that I've cut. Um, to form the wing. The wing is tied out of a synthetic material and I use a Arm & Hammer dryer sheet and then I use to stiffen that dryer sheet I use a fixative uh, in this case it's Grumbacher's for char charcoal drawings and pastels so they don't smear but it, it stiffens the material very well it makes the wing a little easier to work with. I'll start with my tan thread. First step I like to do with this is I take a hook, insert it into the vise. If you notice, the hook doesn't have an eye. What I do with that is I take a strip of foam and I find the center piece of that foam and actually poke a hole in it and put that onto the hook without the eye, making it a lot easier to tie. And I attach my thread to the hook shank and basically take that foam and fold it over and I make my first wrap. around the, the foam and then as I tighten it forms a really nice segmented body and I basically go back and forth advancing the thread on the hook shank bringing the, the foam back over the hook shank making another wrap, tightening, make two loose wraps and then snug it down and that seems to set that body into shape. Then I fold it back again, advance my thread onto the hook shank again, bring the foam back forward, loosen my thread so I have a, a full wrap around the foam again and then snug it down. And again, you can see where that really makes that segmented body. And then just kind of go from there. Once I'm finished with that, I'll whip finish this off, pull the body off of the hook shank without the eye. That makes it a lot easier to do when it doesn't have an eye. And I end up with this right here. And it gives me a good segmented body that'll extend the body a little bit. Then what I do is take the hook I'm going to tie the fly on. And I've poked a hole in that. I've debarbed my, my hook. 
you take a pair of pliers, the easiest way to debarb a hook is to go in line with the hook and not a perpendicular to the point of the hook, but in line with the point and pinch down. You'll break far fewer hooks that way if you do it this way. So once I have that part finished, I basically will find the center point of the foam again and just sort of thread my foam onto that hook shank, put it back in the vise, I'm going to move this forward and kind of trap that foam a little bit so it doesn't get in my way when I start my thread wraps. I'm just going to go start toward the head and move back, wrapping my thread as I go. I go right to the hook point. Take my scissors, get rid of that excess thread, and again wrap toward the eye, and going all the way up to where I want to finish the body, and then back to the bend of the hook. And I advance my thread forward to where I want that first segment to be. At this point, I'm going to take a little bit of a, a brushable super glue and put that on the thread wraps as I go forward. I'm using 3 aught monocord in tan for this process. Just kind of squeeze that foam into place. Just like I did with the segmentation on the eyeless hook, now I am taking that and adding it to the body. Those, that super glue will really help keep this fly strapped to the hook so there won't be any kind of spinning of the body. I just kind of work my way forward. And kind of making a full wrap before I tighten. And that'll give me a nice clean body to the fly. I do that several times, just going back and forth until I have the desired number of wraps and segments on the body of the fly. I reposition the hook a little bit. Again, full, full wraps and then tighten. It will give me a good, easy segmentation. Now a little trick that I'm going to work on to keep this material out of my way as I put the wing on. I've got a loop of thread that I'm going to loop up and over my bobbin holder and then just kind of tighten that foam and that just is like a material clip. It just kind of gets it out of the way for the next step. I advance my thread 
just behind where I want to have the head of the fly. And again, get a base of thread down. And then I'm going to use my wing segment that I've taken from this strip. I've cut it to shape. And in this case, I've pre tie or pre cut and also um, drew um, the different um, markings on the wing. And that's what I'm going to be tying in. So the first thing I want to do is take that wing, make a nice loose wrap, set that wing in, in place to where I want to lay it. Measure it to the body by folding it back over itself and then tying it down. Trim away the excess. I've actually got two segments here. Loose wrap, tighten it down. That keeps it right where I want it positioned. Trim that. I've got actually a double wing here. That just gives it a little bit more bulk. Then I take my little noose, loosen that up, pull it back over the bobbin holder, get that out of the way. And then I want to form my last segment with the body. Lengthen my thread so I can get a complete wrap. Pull straight down and tighten that body up. And I can go in and trim that excess material, both top and bottom. Notice how I use my finger to hold my thread out of the way. So when I do make that tight wrap or that tight cut, I'm not going to inadvertently cut my thread off. Okay. So on that last segment, I've tightened up the head a little bit just so I can make room for the legs. And I use this magic dub and I'm going to just trim a piece of that off. What I do here is I double it over what I think the length of the leg should be. I double that over, take my scissor points and just trim it. So I've evenly even length way or legs and then I just tie those in with a, a loose wrap. I get, get them in place, one on either side of the body. I haven't done any tension on it yet but when I do that will splay those legs in the position I want them. I do one on each side and again, I'm using a loose wrap to start. Kind of position that leg where I want it on the body. And instead of pulling straight down, I'm pulling in the opposite direction of where I want that leg to be secured. I make a wrap in front. I'm using a CDC dubbing 
it's CDC that's been cut off the quill and just makes for real nice buoyant dubbing. I'm just taking a thin amount just to cover those thread wraps that I secured the legs with. Quick wrap there. And do a quick wrap in front of the legs to get them positioned the way I want them. Then I'm going to come back in, fold the wings back over the body. Kind of play with those legs to get them where I want them to be. This is a real key is just manipulating the material to make it where you want it. Come back in now that I've folded that wing back over. Get some more CDC dubbing. Just kind of mixing it up in my hand, spreading it apart. I'm doing a little pinch dub method to twist it around the hook. Take the excess off. a little material out of the way. And go ahead and finish my head. All that's left is, whoops, slipped off the eye. I spoke too soon. <laughs> All that's left is one more wrap. Finish the head off. Quick whip finish. Reposition the wing to where I want it. That would take a lighter and taper those legs down a little bit to make them look a little bit more realistic. And that's the finished fly. So if you can see, I've got a nice segmented body underneath with a nice overwing over the top. And again, just sort of fringe singeing the, the legs to give them a little bit of a taper and that's the finished fly. Yeah. The insect tied in this video is an invasive pest, which means it's an invasive species. Invasive species are those that are introduced to a new area and when they do, they cause harm to things like our forest, agriculture, and to even native plants and animals. The spongy moth is found across 22 eastern and midwestern states. The spongy moth defoliates deciduous trees, making them more susceptible to disease and other pests. If you see an unusual insect or plant damage, you can report it using edmaps.org. Also remember, don't move firewood, just buy it where you burn it.